Aloha and welcome. My name is Taylor Norris. I am a certified galactic astrology soul reader and Reiki master teacher. And in today's video, we will be diving into and exploring the upcoming Virgo full moon on February 24th, 2024. Thank you so much for being here. Before we dive into the astrology, I would like to invite you to an upcoming free distant Reiki share. I offer these every single new moon. Come together in sacred circle, connect directly with the current cosmic energies. And like I said, these are available every new moon. The next new moon is Pisces new moon on March 9th. So for more details and information, you can RSVP for free via my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. And there's still time also to join an upcoming empowering and healing class. It's called Dreaming in the New Healed Timeline, focusing in on this transit that is the North Node conjunct Chiron and Aries. It's a very, very blessed and sacred moment to come together in ceremony and invite in the higher frequencies. I've talked about this class and the importance of Aries energy in general through this year, 2024, into 25, into 26, and even beyond. Feel free to explore that video called The New Healed Timeline for more information about this class. And the details are also on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. All right, so here is the astrological chart for the upcoming Virgo full moon on February 24th, 2024. That's at 2-24-2024. So we have some numerology happening there. And this is an important time for healing, health and healing. Virgo and Pisces are signs of the more earthly, practical, grounded, always looking to improve and refine and perfect energy of this Virgo moon. You can see it up here in the chart. I've got an arrow pointing to it. And balancing that with the sun in Pisces, Pisces a sign that's all about more of the spiritual, mystical, ethereal, emotional, creative, very mysterious and deep and powerful spiritual healing. I'm seeing this as very practically our 3D life rising to meet our 5D life or your life in the higher frequencies, the life in your, you live in your dream time, in your spiritual practice, in your meditation time, that this can be grounded in more clearly, anchored in more clearly. I feel this full moon very strongly is an invitation into healing, healing in any way you feel guided to do so, going within, receiving the medicine of your direct connection to source, your connection to the earth as well, spending time in nature. These would all be wonderful things to do at this time. If you're guided to work with water, do some kind of cleansing, purification ritual, that could be very beautiful. Definitely be paying attention to your dreams and the information that's coming through in your meditations. This is also a time when your health, your daily routines, your nutrition, all of that can be dialed in next level as well. Are you eating the foods that are optimal for you? Are you eating at the specific times of day that really work for you? How's your sleeping and your waking schedule? Are you on some kind of regular rhythm where your body knows that it's safe and it can relax? This is very helpful, especially amongst all of this air energy, Pluto and Aquarius, Mars and Aquarius, Venus 
Venus and Aquarius, the south node of the moon in Libra. You know, later this year, we get even more of this Aquarian energy, more of this air energy as Jupiter moves into the sign of Gemini in May. So now's a really good time to allow into the light of awareness, you know, where are your vulnerabilities in terms of your health, in terms of your daily routines, your practicalities, your 3D material reality, and how can you make certain adjustments to set yourself up for success? And also establishing now routines are reflecting upon whether or not or the extent to which your everyday routines are really bolstering a continued sense of health and well-being and where maybe you are falling short and you're not living up to what you know is your ideal way of being and of course being very gentle with yourself as you do this and make refinements you can make very small refinements if you're not exercising at all you could start with five minutes of exercise or you know you're not drinking enough water just add in one more glass, start really small, make it really practical, make it really doable. Before I was an astrologer, I was a health coach. So I feel like I can talk about this with some authority. This is a great time also to connect with the earth, with gardening, with sustainability as well. Just a really mundane example of this is I know that for me in my personal life around this time, I'm going to be helping set up an off-grid plumbing system that allows me and others who use the system to have a a water flush toilet that then goes into a digester. This is very Virgo with the microbes breaking things down and these microbes breaking down the waste. So using something that would otherwise be waste, using it, breaking it down, alchemizing it, turning it into gas, which then can be used as cooking fuel, like burn a burner on a stove. So it's like closing a whole loop of sustainability here. And what kinds of ways can you become more sustainable? Perhaps composting your fruit and vegetable scraps or tending to your garden, or maybe you're really into recycling or or whatever it might be for you, but looking more into how you can be in a greater sense of harmony and cohesiveness and coherence with the earth. This is going to become more and more important with Pluto and Aquarius and really is a big part about this new consciousness that wants to arise upon the earth. I'm even thinking the Jupiter Uranus conjunction here upcoming in Taurus, April 20th, that we will be looking to improve our health, improve our connection to the earth, improve our connection and communities online and locally as well to really be coming together and living in more sustainable ways. Virgo's all about efficiency, efficient, efficient, efficient. How can the system be made better and more streamlined and less waste and any waste or byproducts, looking at them not as waste or byproducts, but looking at as yet another resource. What are your resources that you may be taking for granted or overlooking? The full moon can help those come into greater clarity. We'll talk more too about this conjunction energy because there's a lot going on here in Pisces with the sun, the sun at five degrees, 23 minutes, Pisces, Mercury closely conjunct, Saturn closely conjunct. And for more specific information too, you can look for where is five degrees, 23 minutes of Virgo in your chart and also five degrees, 23 minutes of Pisces in your chart. Do you have any planets there? Do you have angles? Do you have important points? And you will know, depending on what house they're in, what areas of your life will be 
more highlighted for you where these Virgo and Pisces themes are really going to be manifesting and coming alive. Every single zodiac sign has a ruler and the ruler of Virgo is Mercury. Mercury is in the sign of Pisces. So it's getting lots of spiritual downloads and maybe dreaming and imagining and visualizing quite a lot, having artistic kinds of thoughts, creative thoughts, feeling inspired and mystical and poetic and can maybe have a lot to say, like there's a lot of feeling, but how does the communication come out? Maybe it just goes, comes out on and on and on, and there's no stop to the, the communication. Maybe there's quite a lot of inspiration potential here as well. And the sun is also conjunct Saturn. So Saturn has been in Pisces for almost a year now. This full moon will mark almost a year that Saturn has been in Pisces. Saturn entered Pisces in March of 2023. So all of these energies together working to make those visions of the spiritual awakened enlightened reality super inspired mercury and the sun shining that light of potential these opportunities and saturn helping make them real make them practical make them tangible give them form more of the new earth forms coming into manifestation and plans in specifics and logistics about how do we implement the vision how does it all come together how does that 3d life the 3d logistics the earth plane the physical reality the material reality rise to support the higher vision the creative potential the visualization the dream this visionary plan and seed creation of the new consciousness whatever this is for you in your life your community your dream for humanity as a whole as well this is really really beautiful here the full moon is also receiving supportive aspects from Jupiter. Jupiter is sextile the sun and trine the moon. So this is just expanding that connection to the earth. Jupiter is still in the sign of Taurus, expanding the practicalities, the manifestation and assisting in 3D life to make its rise to meet the 5D life and dreams as well. The Sabian symbol for Virgo 6, the degree point of the moon, is a merry-go-round. The keynote is the first experience of the dynamic intensity of life processes and of the possibility of using them to reach a characteristic ego satisfaction. You're welcome to pause the video and read through this interpretation. It comes from astrologer Dane Rudger, mindfire.ca. There's an interpretation for every single degree of the zodiac. And it's quite fun to look at these for the transits and for also all the points and planets in your chart. The main takeaway here is in its broadest sense, we see here a characterization of what the developing consciousness and at a certain level, the disciple on the path experiences an objective approach to the life force. So thinking also of that Virgo, that streamline, that efficiency, and its polarity of Pisces, Pisces, the life force, the invisible realm, and objectively relating to it, channeling the life force in strategic, specific, refined ways. This is very inspirational. This is very magical. There is so much potential and really this sense that anything is possible when our etheric realm is used in such a way with precision, with accuracy, with intention, with focus, that we really can 
and are co-creators of our reality and co-creators of our collective reality as we are each sacred vessels and embodiments of this spiritual life force energy that has its manifestations. It takes on its various forms in our physical world. So the merry-go-round also invoking the inner child, the divine child within each of us. And what were those dreams of your inner child, of your childhood years? How can you strategically use and channel your life force and receive the support of the invisible realms, the imaginal realms to bring your dreams into reality? Now may be a very good time when this comes into greater consciousness, comes into greater awareness, clarity, and objectivity so that you may see those possibilities reflected to you more fully in the external world. The Sabian symbol for the sun is a parade of army officers in full dress, the dedication of human beings to the service of their community, and the assurance that it will be emotionally sustained by the people at large. The key word is group responsibility. And instead of creating an image that actually reflected the symbol <laughs> in the army officers in full dress, I co-created here with the AI these light beings in this sacred cosmic realm coming together in a circle of group responsibility, each being connected to the light. So carrying this group responsibility in a way that feels really authentic and empowering for you. I'm thinking about this more in an Aquarian way, in a Piscean way, rather than in some kind of militaristic way. I mean, this is the old paradigm that is very focused on separation and division and the, the boundaries between peoples and nations and so on and wars and fighting and we need to protect against forces and instead coming into this awareness that we are all one whole and yes there is a need for boundaries and discernment and certain levels of protection but we can do that by surrounding ourselves in fields of light and we can have a sense of group responsibility that is not necessarily confined to oneself or one family or one's country or nation, that it can extend beyond and be a group responsibility to the earth, to the planet, to the solar system, to the cosmos, to your soul, to your spirit, to the evolution of consciousness, broadening out into these possibilities of more of the humanitarian and global and all inclusive visions of this age of Aquarius and this new paradigm and new consciousness. This is the galactic chart for this full moon. This comes from galacticasterchart.com. Highly recommend you visit this website and you can create a chart like this for yourself. This chart shows all the conjunct and opposite alignments for each of the planets and the important points in the chart. I've cut out some of the points because this is a transit, but if you were to do this for your natal chart, you would also see ascendant, midheaven, part of fortune, vertex, and some other things. So we see here quite a lot of galactic activation, particularly with the sun and the moon and with Mercury. And we will dive into the Royal Star Fomalhaut in Piscis Austernus constellation and the Nabadiz star in Cygnus constellation in the next slide because they figure in very strongly in this particular full moon and are some of my favorite <laughs> galactic energies of so many favorite stars now. I feel like in every video I'm saying that's one of my favorite stars and it's true. I have a lot of favorite stars because they're 
They're all so beautiful. The nodes of the moon are still working with Alpharet star and Andromeda. Jupiter is opposing a crux star in crux constellation. This is bringing up, this can be bringing up self-sacrificing tendencies. This can be bringing up themes of martyrdom and victimhood and victim consciousness, all looking to be healed. This can also be bringing up ways that as a light worker, a healer, a reader, you know, somebody who is on the leading edge of the new consciousness in whatever way, like come feeling safe enough to come out of the closet as yourself and also realizing your inherent value and your inherent worth as a healer, light worker, reader, or whatever form or role or many roles you may take you may be taking and embodying maybe as a mother or a father or a sibling or a grandparent who is on this leading edge of the new consciousness and understanding how important it is what you are doing embodying the higher frequencies and there is no need to self-sacrifice. There is a need to value yourself and take very good care of yourself and use this full moon too as an opportunity to engage in your own healing and check in with yourself about your own needs, realizing that as you do that, you give to yourself, you also give to others as well. Pluto is and will be working with these two stars all year long, a Ladfar star in Lyra constellation, Aquila star in Altair constellation. These are the winged ones. These are the birds, two of the birds, the vulture and the eagle. So friends, all year long, be listening to the songs of the birds and the messages and also understand that if you're bombarded by a lot of noise and external reality to have your noise canceling headphones on hand. I have two pairs of these that I wear. Some I'm in rural Hawaii and often there are weed whackers or mowers nearby and I just need to turn it off. And I know there are noises everywhere, like the dogs are barking right now. There are noises everywhere unless you are really, really cloistered in nature. And the noises, of course, of humans and relationships and information and so on. So making sure that you tune into your own inner voice and make time and space and practices for you to engage in communities where there's a like this video and other astrology communities, Reiki communities, spiritual communities that help empower you and stabilize you in the frequencies of the new consciousness and the new paradigm and immersing yourself more and more in that, like leaning into the support of the community. This is so important and it quantum leaps and accelerates our growth and manifestation within the new consciousness. Lilith is opposite Eridanus constellation at your Nar star. So there could be a continuation of this healing of the cataclysmic soul memories, the memories within our ancestral history, within our cellular, in our DNA structures, in our human bodies, and also embedded within the earth and the land and the waters from the human element of these memories of the resets taking place on earth and also on other planets when things got way too out, out of balance and certain cyclic cyclic cleansing processes were enacted whether by natural forces or by angelic guardianship teams and ET teams or some combination of all of those specific councils helping to cultivate more of this balance, also working with the intelligence of the earth and her understanding of when certain cataclysmic resets were necessary 
in order to facilitate a cleansing and a purification of her own bodies and the bodies of humanity and the life forms upon the earth, her own kind of etheric and physical cleansing processes. So you may want to visit the Atlantis timeline shift. This was a Reiki journey I channeled for the new moon that was really working with the Atlantean and these cataclysmic energies and healing any and all timelines and versions of self linked to the Atlantean consciousness and also linked to these traumas and historical memories, DNA and cellular memories connected to these reset events and bringing in really the light here and healing there. So understanding if this energy is manifesting for you that it's a good time to do some self-reiki, do some healing, some energy healing, whatever kind of healing practice you may be guided to, to assist in the release of these trauma signatures. So there's no need to repeat them and you can feel very secure, even as you may feel like you're walking into uncertainty, <laughs> you know, an uncharted territory and becoming more comfortable doing that. Chiron is working with Tal Seti star in Cetus constellation. And this is again, really inviting us into the dream time, into our very deeply held unconscious memories and multidimensional self for our healing, for our mastery, for our empowerment. The beautiful galactic energies that are very highlighted this full moon include Royal Star FOMO Halt and the Shaman Star Deneb Adish in Cygnus Constellation. FOMO Halt here is at the bottom of the Aquarius Constellation at the fish's mouth here, receiving the liquid life and the liquid waters of Aquarius, receiving divine intelligence, receiving insights and illumination and messages. This star is linked to Archangel Gabriel. So there's a real opportunity to be, to be receiving divine guidance, to be understanding more of your soul and spirit consciousness, to be engaging in channeling, channeling your creativity, channeling your heart and soul song, channeling the words and the guidance you may need to hear, channeling your next step, channeling the decisions you need to make, channeling through writing, any and all kinds of ways that you connect to flow states of consciousness as well. I'm really feeling this like flow states, very, very important here. FOMO Halt is a star of mysticism and insights. Both of these are FOMO Halt is the watcher of the South. It's linked to idealism, charisma, having big visions, big dreams. And I've included some of the interpretations here from Bernadette Brady. When the sun is with FOMO Halt, this speaks of the artist, the idealist, the charismatic person to be vulnerable to hubris. So this is where that Virgo polarity is really helpful, staying humble, staying in beginner's mind, continuing to learn, not thinking you're just totally invincible, and also understanding, you know, your rightful place in the circle of divine guides and your connection to source and all of that. This is really like anchoring into that power of love and that humility vibration. The need to keep one's feet on the ground while one's head is in the cloud. This is like story of my life. <laughs> How many of you can relate to that, right? It's like part of your life is lived completely in the clouds and then another part is lived on the earth and there is a way to keep a balance and and live both lives pisces is one of the dual signs it's one of the mutable signs so definitely grounding the moon in virgo can help with this grounding a time of dreams realized or lost so there can be that disillusionment kind of neptune pisces 
loss, letting go, frequency, cleansing, purification. And if that's your story, if grief is coming up, let that go, let that flow. For some, this will be a time of dreams being made physical and coming into reality and being in the accepting and the receiving of Oh my gosh, I've had this vision, this visualization. I've held it for so long, so many weeks and months and years and lifetimes perhaps. And it's really starting to come together and take on more and more form. And wow, welcoming that in as well. Mercury, the ruler of this full moon, is also conjunct FOMO Hall. This can be having an idealistic vision. It can also be deceptive. Pisces is linked with that possibility, Neptune as well, of deception. And so this is where the Virgo moon discernment is really helpful. What is true to you? Making sure that you are clear that you are not being deceptive and that you're also not being victim to others' deceptions. You know, follow your intuition, trust your inner voice. If you feel like something's off, guess what? Something's off. Pay attention to that. Don't give away your power by disregarding your own intuition or something not feeling right in your body. You know the truth. Your body knows the truth. Simply listen to your body and trust your body and your intuition. This can also be the poet or the liar. So being very inspired with the words and again, detecting any kind of deviation from the truth to be persuasive with one's words. In what ways is somebody trying to persuade you of something that's just not true to you? Or you, if you're finding yourself trying to persuade someone else, to believe the way you do or do the thing that you do, just letting go of that. I know when I first went vegan, I thought everybody should be vegan. <laughs> it turns out that is, that is not the case. And it's also like people don't want to hear that. So becoming aware and honoring of everybody's different paths and different truths and different ways of being well and different ways of thriving and their entitlement to be on their path and be on their journey. And if they come to you asking questions or advice, then give it, but you don't need to persuade anybody else to believe how you believe, think how you think, or do what you do. That is not the point. You get to live your truth and that's for you to live. False reports are reports based on more illusion than fact. That's why I just have your intuitive radar and antenna up and listen. Trust yourself first. Trust yourself first. Deneb Adish, equally beautiful star, the shaman star also of mysticism and insights linked to the spiritual warrior. It's here in this beautiful swan that's quite fierce, quite spiritual, quite mystical, but it's really going after <laughs> this other bird here. So this can be kind of a flaming hot spiritual warrior vibration. On the other hand, it can also be alchemized into more of that light bringer life light bearer, more of a soft manifestation here that's very strong and fierce in its compassion, but need not be so aggressive or going and looking for shamanic battles to fight. I know I've been there, done that before. No, 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 no. <laughs> there is another way. <laughs> The sun with the Nabadish can be the desire to explore places, spiritual beliefs, and ideas, the courage to act on one's beliefs, the shaman, the one who touches other worlds, news of a pioneer. So this is your invitation to go on a shamanic journey, to go on a Reiki journey, to have a spiritual experience, to invite your guides and your meditations or yourself Reiki to give you an experience, to engage your sensory apparatus, to engage 
and give you a direct experience. I ask for this and sometimes it's like I'll have such intense cold chills, for example, and I can feel the energy so strongly of that cold. It's like a permafrost within me. One of the images I've been getting a lot lately is the like a chain link, a link of chains, a chain made by all these individual metal links, and that I am one link in the chain, me present now moment self. And I am perceiving the link, the a priori, the prior link, a past self, a past version of myself. I'm also perceiving the future self as another link and that I'm just one link in a chain holding hands with this future, you know, descendant, ascendance version of myself holding hands with also my ancestors and the ones who came before version of self and together we make this chain and this has been coming in so strongly and viscerally and palpably and we all in our current embodiment are just one link in this chain of a larger soul stream and when we come together we just create these beautiful structures and I don't mean chains in a way of binding or confining. I'm it's it's in a very beautiful, connective, empowering, and very supportive kind of way. So there may be a greater sensation and awareness of your own multidimensional context within your reality and expanded sense of time and expanded sense of connecting to that greater quantum self more of a feeling of wholeness I think this is definitely available to us in the time leading up to the full moon and then definitely in the full moon and kind of the rest of the lunar cycle and especially as we come into Pisces season as well so really really beautiful energies like I said these are two of my favorite stars like and they're really really loud in this full moon so enjoy them very much and receive the downloads receive and this is a good time to write them down write down the messages that you are being given you know make art create with it embed it in the food that you make embed it in the the gardening or the other kinds of projects that you're up to the jewelry you might be making the crochet whatever it is whatever it is for you the crafts the you know, day-to-day -day things that you're engaging with and creating with, embed the messages in the higher consciousness in that. So some final messages here about the full moon. I pulled three Galactic Heritage cards. This is from the Galactic Heritage card deck by Lisa Royal Holt. Wonderful deck if you want to connect in with the galactic energies and also connect in to more of your multidimensional self. I use this card deck in my Galactic Astrology Soul Readings and I absolutely love it. So the first card I pulled was this Vega Star System Present Time number 25 alone time if you need more alone time you need to go with and you don't feel like being around people honor that if you're feeling like isolated and you need to connect and you're craving more of that contact go and do that so it's really about that self-honesty and balancing your alone time your withdrawal with time being in community and being with others the second card I drew was Embracing Transition. This is Sirius Star System Present Timeline. And this is really acknowledging the transition that we're all in in the 3D life rising to meet the 5D life. The, you know, old paradigm 
falling away or really rising in its frequency to meet with the higher visions of the new consciousness. This can also be about letting go, letting die old versions of ourselves and just being in that process of the transition, of the rebirth, of the in-between space, of the messy middle, of, you know, the manifestation is not fully there, but I'm in it and I can see more and more form of it, more and more structure of it. So being really gentle here for you and understanding this is a process that we're all in as a collective. The last card I got was dream time and awakening, which I know I pulled this card not so long ago for one of these lunar updates. This is the Cetacean Wells Parallel. And where I'm located in Hawaii in February, this is whale season. We can see them in the ocean. This also makes me think of Chiron's alignment to Tau Ceti star and our collective unconscious and our subconscious really coming up for healing, for clearing, for paying attention in your dream time, asking for prophetic dreams, asking that in your dream time, that you are being guided, that you're being healed, that you're connecting with your guides and so on. And this can be also a sign here to be trusting your intuition, trusting the messages of your body in discerning lies, deception, truth, and listening and honoring your own inner truth above all else. You want to dive into this Talcetti energy more Please join the Dreaming in the New Heal Timeline class I'm offering February 19th. As I said, you're all very welcome to come to the Distant Reiki Share for the Pisces New Moon March 9th. And to learn more about all my readings, my sessions, my classes that are coming up, all of those details are on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. I hope you all have such a beautiful full moon guiding you home to heaven on earth within yourself with Reiki and astrology. Thank you for being part of my soul family. Aho, amen, namaste, and so it is. Mahalo.